for 97 uh, for the Sky Lounge here. Uh, good, good God, why do I have to explain that much? But, welcome. Uh, and we're going to be recording for the Twitch. Also going to be recording here on this device on uh, SoundCloud, which will be available as soon as the recording is done. Along with the YouTube clips, uh, YouTube's going to be uploaded too, so be on the lookout for that at the Sky Lounge. So I'm going to get started here in a couple of minutes. I know it's been a week. I haven't been on this shit in a week. I've been on this shit in a week. Good God. I know, I know, I know. I've been, I've been preaching consistency. I've been saying consistency, but um, it's been it's been kind of a... Uh, good Lord, I think it's just been I've been a lazy cunt is what that is. So, yep, let's go ahead and get to the fucking recording. And once we start recording, we're going to get into it. We have battery life on the tablet this time around. So last week, what actually happened was I recorded at about maybe 5% battery left. And as soon as I got done recording, it flat out tells me that I didn't record anything. And funny enough, uh, another uh, subsequent week of tech failures all throughout the house. All throughout the fucking house. Um, this room, this specific room that I record shit in, that I do everything in, like office work shit, the power went out. And so now I have the Wi-Fi running through on extension cords right now and doing this kind of makeshift shit. And honestly, it, it, it pisses me off, but at the same time, we gotta get shit done. We, we, gotta, we gotta just grind and power through. So let's get this shit started, right? So I'm gonna get the recording started for you boys and girls, and uh, let's go ahead and do this shit. Hey everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge Podcast, episode number 97, and as always, thank you so much for joining me today and listening in. If you are new, welcome and check out some of the other episodes on the page. All episodes are available on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Music, so make sure you are subscribed so you can get notified for a new episode every Tuesday. Make sure to follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook at The Sky Lounge. Stalk me on Snapchat at DA13IG5UNG. Let's get started. Okay, so the topic of the week this week, the tantalizing grazing Green Day debacle. No August big monthly adventures. What the fuck is he talking about? Well, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Is your title having a stroke? No, my title isn't having a stroke. It's just a fun way to explain how I had no big monthly adventures in August. And I am really debating about having two, that's right, two uh, big monthly adventures in September. Hence the Green Day debacle, you know, from the lyrics, wake me up when September ends. That, that's the whole reason why I put the lyrics in or the Green Day title in there. And good Lord, that was a convoluted explanation. So let's, let's move on. Right, so what is a big monthly adventure, you might be asking yourself, and rightly so, because I haven't really explained it yet. The big monthly adventure is as the title suggests. Just, I go somewhere for the month and attend a big monthly event. I'm, that's kind of really it, and I'm, I don't really know how else to explain it. And the idea is to go to new places and open my horizons to new shit that's out there. That I can, you know, go and travel and see other shit. So, which has worked out for me pretty nicely, and, you know, I have visited uh, new places and will be visiting new places um, throughout the year, throughout the remainder of this year. So that's going to be really fun um, to, to go and see shit like that, right? And so, the big monthly adventures that we've had so far, as of, what, September, today was September 4th? As of September 4th, 2018... January, we went to the AVN 2018, the porn convention. Fantastic time. Uh, you know, I learned I learned all about, you know, just openness in, in you know, fetishes. And th this culture of porn and sex is, is very open. It's very open, but it's just the outside world look, you know, discouraging it. That's really it. And really great experience to go there. February was the musical Rent, and I've never seen Rent before. I believe this was the 20th or 25th anniversary. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. This might have been the 30th, yeah, 30th anniversary of the Rent musical. And I was able to watch this ensemble cast just kill it in Vegas, and fantastic time. Just to understand how production works. How individual pieces make up this big fucking end result and it's, it was glorious it was absolutely amazing rent was great 
And then in March, I went to New Orleans uh, for a sports and touring event. You know, mostly just watched the New Orleans Pelicans and the Lakers play. You know, walked around, visited other, you know, visited areas uh, in the French quarters, walked around, ate, and had a really good time just seeing a new environment. Never been to New Orleans before, so that was very interesting. A lot of history there. A lot of architectures that I, I would have never imagined, you know, being in the United States and shit. So it was really cool to see shit like that, especially in New Orleans. April, I went to my brother's um, outing and road trip to L.A., and that was a whole Disneyland and food thing. You know, you just we went to Disneyland. We just ate all fucking weekend. I was just baked and sleeping all weekend, to be honest. And that was kind of nice. But, you know, I just started. I was starting a new job at that point. I wanted a week off, so a weekend off at least. So that was that was having that was a really nice little outing. And May and June is kind of a strange back to back, but May and June, I had the NHL Western Conference Final Game Four for the Vegas Golden Knights. I had that for May, and let me tell you what that game was pretty goddamn spectacular. Just the crowd, the energy, and we won. Let alone the fact that we won, the building was going unbelievable it was unbelievable the way the building was uh, going and i mean if anybody was there i mean you you have to understand that that game was fucking phenomenal to go to and june was the nhl stanley cup final game five vegas golden knights losing to the washington capitals and honestly i still love the experience i i love the idea of okay you you lose but how are you going to get back and that was really the question i asked myself and you know i was probably asking yeah i'm pretty sure the players were asking like how how do you get back how do you get back and as a fan you get excited you get excited at the prospect and you become a hardcore fan because of it and henceforth you know the flag and the hat and so in July, we went to Anime Expo in L.A. for the anime convention, and I again, it was just a lot of eating, a lot of smoking, a lot of fucking good times when we uh, when we headed out over there. So July was fun, and of, of course, we, we talked about August. We didn't have a big monthly adventure in August, but it's okay, because in September, and for the upcoming big monthly adventures, we do have a lot of stuff lined up, and honestly, I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait because September we're going to have the Life is Beautiful musical uh, music festival in about a couple of weeks here. And I do, I would really love to get another big monthly adventure in, you know, maybe this month or, you know, possibly maybe next month and use it as a birthday excuse and just do that shit. October, I will be going to Dallas uh, for a bit of sports and touring. Yes, I'm going to be watching the Dallas Stars and the Dallas Cowboys in action. That's going to be a load. That's going to be loads of fun. Um... In November, it's going to be Lion King the Musical. In December, I'm not really sure I, if I really want to go to either San Francisco or Seattle. So that's going to be a debate left up for some time. I mean, I still got a good month or so before I think I need to decide on that shit. So guys, ultimately, with Big Monthly Adventures, what I really just want to talk about is the fact that go to new places and try new shit. That's really it. Go to new places, try new shit. Good people. I mean, like, like you good people out there, just listen. Try out new shit, all right? New shit is great. I mean, are you fucking serious? It's fun. So just go go out there, have fun, and try new shit. Simple as that, right? Simple as that. And we move on now to some souse. Sports and other weird shit. Arsenal. We gotta talk about Arsenal, don't we? Of course we gotta talk about Arsenal. You're an obsessive fan. Why wouldn't you talk about Arsenal? Unai Emery. Bans fruit juice from training ground as part of a new fitness regime at the club. I love this. I love stories like this. Whenever I hear stories like this, minute details that no one really gives a shit about, but it really illustrates strictness and just this level of responsibility from the head coach. I love it. It's just that it's the just do your job mentality that I love watching in sports where people just, it's not about, what, where you are in terms of standing, your seniority, none of that shit matters. It's meritocracy. It's all about how good you do, how well do you follow the rules, how well do you play, how well do you practice, all this shit, all this shit combines. And, you know, that that's the beauty of sports, but that's for some other time. And when we go into week number four for Arsenal at Cardiff City, come out with the win. 
Oh my god, an away win? I haven't seen that in... Oh god, I don't... Ooh, I have no idea. I haven't seen an Arsenal away win in a long time. So that that's, that's a lot said. So let's talk about the goals and really at the end of it, the match itself. Mustafi with the goal in the 11th minute. Xhaka with the cross. Header in. And the fucking Al... The fucking Albanian fucking eagle gesture. Remember, boys and girls, during the World Cup match against Serbia, you know, Switzerland against Serbia, and yes, uh, Sajaka and his, his Switzerland teammate uh, Shakiri are of Albanian background, and Albania and Serbia has had a fucking war and all this crazy shit, political rifts, and it nearly caused a whole uproar in the World Cup. So yeah, good fucking job, Mustafi. Re way to not really have that uh, political awareness or any kind of sensibility in that shit. That, that's why we got you. Good lord. And so, funny thing is, when we talk about Mustafi, and let's let's be honest, that defense and goalkeeping uh, aspect of it, we we kind of shit the bed. Right before right before the first half ends, 45th minute, two minutes uh, into, into injury time, fucking defense fails from piss poor clearance and lack of awareness. And what a goddamn surprise. What a goddamn surprise. And for us to think that Arsenal has some some kind of semblance of a of a of a chance to to get to the fucking title race. I don't I don't think so. The, this is one of those moments where you made Cardiff City. You you went into the second half with that momentum just completely killed. But somehow some way, Arsenal boys found a way. Sixty second minute, a goal from Aubameyang from Ozil to Lacazette to Aubameyang. Ozil Lakaaba, outside the box from Aubameyang. Boom, motherfucker. Here he starts. Here Aubameyang starts. And guys, I'm going to say it right now. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang will more than likely score 25 plus goals this season. He will score 25 goals this season. I'm going to say that right now. And so, despite our offense looking shimmering and glistening and beautiful and clicking... Our defense just looks like shit. Our defense, on contrary to all of this beautiful uh, aspects of offense, look like complete shit. Okay? And so, defense breaks down eight minutes after we just scored the go-ahead goal. And it's now equalized two all. Okay? If we're, if we're keeping count, it's two all at this point. And so, oh boy. When you realize that the defense is just not giving a fuck... You start questioning if we can actually win this match. And mind you, Cardiff just got promoted. Cardiff just got promoted. They're not world beaters. And I'm not taking anything away from Cardiff. They had an outstanding route to try to win this match. Bring it to 2 all. But thankfully, thankfully, Lacazette scores in the 81st minute. Torreira, who came on in the 75th minute or so, passes the ball to Lacazette who blasts it from an angle inside of the box. And that was an acute angle just fucking curling in like that. And he had a great opportunity a couple uh, minutes before that, and it actually hit the woodwork. But Lacazette what, deserved, deserved a man of the match, won the man of the match, and was outstanding. And when you have Aubameyang and Lacazette both in that lineup, shit opens up, the shit just opens up, the pitch opens up, defenses make mistakes, and defense feel pressured. So I would love to see this continue. I would love to see this partnership just continue to grow. And that would just be great if we can just score and figure out this defense. And hey, a win is a win is a fucking win. But let's talk about the defense. What a fucking trailer trash dumpster fire. There's really no other way to say it, is there? It is an absolute fucking dumpster fire. And the dogs are going crazy. But because they agree. They absolutely agree. I, 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 you know, the whole, the whole thing with the our Arsenal defense is predicated on Mustafi and Socrates just kind of understanding how to handle the ball, how to clear the ball, how to play from the back. They make crucial mistakes at the worst possible times, and Petter check doesn't help either at this point. Old man Petter, okay, old man Petter, just. Lord, I, I, sometimes I just don't know how, how he misses some of these saves. And he's conceded so many goals at this point. Four matches in, we have conceded seven goals. That's not that great. 
you can offset it by scoring goals, but my god, that is not a good count. That is not a good count. But hey, again, a win is a win is a win. Let's take the three points because we're sitting comfortably at ninth. All right. And so for Arsenal, the Europa League and Carabao Cup has been announced. So Europa League group stages in the Carabao Cup, I believe, round four or five. I don't really give a fuck. Okay, I mean, I'm serious. I'm, I really just don't care. I'll cover them when we get there. Obviously, when they play, I'll cover them. I'll talk about them. But until then, who fucking cares? I mean, these are these are competitions Arsenal early on tend to do very well. It's just that middle stage or, you know, maybe past the quarterfinals. That's when you start qu really questioning what the fuck is Arsenal actually doing? What are you actually going to achieve? Or what can you do something? Can you provide some sort of answer for us, please? So until then, we'll, we won't ask the questions. And next week, international break. Ooh, international break. At least that won't move us up and down from the table at night. So I'll take that for what it is, right? And so when we talk about football news in general this week, a lot's been happening. A lot's been fucking happening. And Champions League draw, Champions League group stage draw being the main, main one, right? Looking pretty good. Notable groups that I want to talk about. Group B, Barcelona, Inter, PSV, and Tottenham. Very hard to say who's going to come out of that group alive. I think Barcelona should be clear for, you know, first place. Inter and Tottenham, and, and to a lesser extent, PSV. Those three clubs, you just don't know who's going to make it in, into the top two. So we're going to have to see how that ends up. But Group C as well, PSG... Napoli, Liverpool, and Red Star Belgrade from Serbia. I also think Red Star Belgrade is a dangerous club if you don't be careful. That away fixture is pretty daunting to take care of. And so if you don't take care of that in the defensive end, it's just gonna be it's gonna be a fucking nightmare. It's gonna be an absolute fucking nightmare. So best best of luck to those clubs in that group C because it is a that is a trap group. That is an absolute trap group. And so when we talk about Group H, you got Juventus, Valencia, Manchester United, and Young Boys. Why do you say the Young Boys squad is going to be curious? Because Valencia is another trap team, another very strong club. That In the away fixtures, you just don't know how other clubs will be able to handle it. Juventus just goes without saying. Manchester United, I think people tend to ignore. Yes, they tend to have bad runs, but that squad is pretty spectacular. I mean, on paper, that squad is pretty damn spectacular. So that's going to be interesting to watch. So those three groups, in my opinion, should be just something to be on the lookout for. And when we continue to look, you know, the UFA player of the season, you know, was announced. UFA competitions uh, was actually on the big fucking ups today. As we see Luka Modric was a UFA player of the season. I think I said that like two fucking three times. I just kind of lost track. But... When we talk about Luka Modric, she's had a fantastic year and absolutely deserves it. Real Madrid's three-peat, Croatia's World Cup final, second-place finish, and his overall game has gotten better, despite his age at, what, 33 or 34. Smooth like butter, baby. Smooth like goddamn butter. And Modric has been phenomenal. And for him to be now shortlisted as the three finalists for the FIFA Player of the Year between Modric, Ronaldo, and Salah... Don't be surprised if Modric wins this. Don't, don't be surprised if Modric wins this and potentially wins the Ballon d'Or too. Potentially winning that Ballon d'Or. I just don't know, but we'll have to see. We're really going to have to see how that, how that handles through. And so UEFA, and again, we just keep going with the UEFA thing because there was a lot of UEFA news this week. And UEFA keeper, defense, and midfield, and forward of the season has been announced. All Real Madrid players in respectively, Kaylor Navas, Sergio Ramos, Luka Modric, and Cristiano Ronaldo. But her fanboys aside, Real Madrid just completed a three-peat during the 2017-18 season and absolutely deserves that mark. And I believe Zidane won the Coach of the Year, too. So, I mean, again, not a surprise. Real Madrid dominated Europe the last two, three years. Will things change? We don't know. We'll have to see. And so, things we are going to see changing in the football world is Clint Dempsey, a.k.a. Captain America, retires from football after his long and illustrious career uh, throughout, you know, the United States, in Europe, and specifically in England, and an excellent career for Dempsey, and has tied the most goal score for the United States. Congratulations on a wonderful and illustrious career, uh, Clint Dempsey, 
and best of luck to you in all your future endeavors. Um, I really hope he finds success in what else he does in you know the future. And so it's great that we talk about Clint Dempsey. You know, Seattle, C, you know, Seattle Sounders uh, player. Uh, I don't know if he still plays for them or has retired at this point. But when we talk about Seattle, God, gosh, we got we got to talk about Seattle Seahawks, right? So the Seattle Seahawks goes ahead and plays their final preseason of the of the fucking year. Preseason number four. Goes 0-4. Loses 30-19 against the Oakland Raiders. I don't care. I don't care. I don't, I don't fucking care. It's finally fucking over. It's finally fucking over. There's actual Seahawks news and other shit that we can fucking talk about. Fuck you, preseason. God damn it. I swear to God. Fuck preseason. Done with that shit. So, guys, let's talk about some Seahawks news. Brett Hundley of the Green, Green Bay Packers was traded for a 2019 sixth round draft. So do we have, what, four quarterbacks just here? I mean, all right. I mean, I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm just kind of curious. Like, do you really need four quarterbacks right now? All right. I'm just giving away draft picks, but okay. All right. So we also had news that came out that Doug Baldwin will be will not be 100% healthy and with his knee injury all next season. He's going to be resting that knee injury and really playing at about 80, 85%. And honestly, I think that's optimistic. I think we're going to be seeing him at about 65, 75%. And, you know, so much for the receiving core, right? But, you know, I hope Doug can heal fully uh, and come back stronger, you know. And maybe, hey, who the fuck knows? Maybe the second half of the season he gets back to 100%. Plays like the Doug we know. And maybe with, even, even despite not being 100%, maybe Doug can still, you know, be Doug. And just just carry carry us forward. So let, let's be on the lookout for that. And guys, Tyler Lockett signs a three-year, thirty-one point eight million dollar extension. You know, estimating that's about ten ten million dollars a year annually. Great extension and awesome for Tyler. I can't complain about that. I think that's a pretty solid deal. He will have to take a bigger role this season, and especially you know, especially with Doug being out with that you know not hundred percent you know status. And so that'll be interesting to watch and see unfold. And so next week, holy shit, we back. Yes. Week number one at Denver Broncos, September 9th. I can't wait. I can't wait. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know the result, but I can't wait for some goddamn football. Let's get this shit started. And let's talk about some NFL news because we are going to be talking about some football. There's an NFL football coming up in a few days. I can't wait. I'm going to be having a bit of a gathering here at the house with a couple of guys. That's going to be fun to watch. But holy fucking shit, guys. We got to talk about what happened the last week in the NFL. There was a lot of shit that happened in the NFL. So let's start off with Aaron Rodgers. Green Bay Packers, four years, $134 million extension, $100 million guaranteed. Good God, wait until one of the younger QBs in the league with all the inflation, everything included, um, and I'm pretty sure with a collective bargain agreement all the, with the players union and all that shit. That, that guarantee, that extension and guarantee money, that it's only going to go up. And it's going to be perhaps detrimental to the clubs in the near future, but we'll have to see. And you know who really comes to mind is Carson Wentz. I mean, I think it goes without saying that if Carson Wentz continues to develop at the pace he did his second year, he will more than likely be the best quarterback in the league, right? So we're going to have to find out and see who gets that crazy money. And I'm telling you, we're going to get to that point. We're going to get to that point. The first $200 million NFL player is going to rise. And I swear to God, that day happens, it's going to be some crazy shit. Because we're getting there. We're nearly getting there. Because Aaron Donald of the Los Angeles Rams, signs a four-year, $136 million extension, $87 million guaranteed. Rams are really banking on money this year. And to have a player like Aaron Donald sign in for that long, that is, that is a great deal. But I hope there's no success in that because fuck you, Stan Kroenke. Fuck Kroenke. And I'm an NFC West rival. Why the fuck would I cheer for their betterment? Like, get the fuck out of here with that shit. But let's talk about the the big the biggest news piece and really the talking point of this weekend. 
was defensive end Khalil Mack was traded from the Oakland Raiders to the Chicago Bears. And the Bears, furthermore, extended him to $141 million contract, six years, $90 million guaranteed. And in the trade, the Bears acquired Khalil Mack, a 2022nd round pick, and a 2025th round pick. While the Raiders acquire a 2019 first round pick, a 2019 sixth round pick, a 2020 first round pick, and a 2023rd round pick. Woo! First of all, 141, it, good lord, that is a lot of money. And I'm telling you, the 200 mark is coming soon. That 200 mark is going to come up real soon. And when it does, I'm telling you, it's, it might change the landscape of the NFL. We just don't fucking know. And good God, Raiders, what the fuck are you actually doing? What the fuck are you actually doing? I actually had the Raiders taking that AFC West, but I'm really starting to change my mind at this point. I really think the Chargers are going to take that AFC West and Kansas City being the close second. And really, that are, I mean, with the Raiders, it's really, are you really about to embrace the tank? Are you going to embrace the tank and just say, fuck it? Just going to say, fuck it and let, let's, let's, just, let's just deal with the shit when we, when we get to it? Oh, man, I, I don't know. And the Bears, the biggest question for the Bears is, are you sure Trubisky can get you there? Are you sure Mitchell Trubisky is your answer? We see all the pieces forming just right right now. That defensive, that defense core is it, amazing right now for the Bears. I think the Bears defense is going to be phenomenal. Maybe the revitalization of the 80, 85 Bears. Who the fuck knows? If only as football fans, we are so lucky to have that. But we'll have to see. And... That really, that QB spot is the lingering question mark. So for the Bears, that that's gonna be that. We'll have to see. And for the NFL, final final piece that we have to talk about here. Final piece that I don't want to get too into today. I don't want to get too into it today. Colin Kaepernick will be the face of the new Nike campaign. Believe in something, even if it means sacrifice everything. All right, you fuckers. I won't get balls deep into this shit today because Lord fucking knows I can't get into it with any of this shit these days because everybody's going to fucking freak out. But this is just my opinion. So don't try to snort this shit up your fucking ass. All right. Just hear me out. I think Colin Kaepernick was an underwhelming, mediocre quarterback who became part of the media circus and is now being deified by the hyperbole driven, over emotional social justice warrior society. I think, I think that's really it. Take that for what it is, but that's just my opinion. I can honestly get into this whole rant and fucking segment about Colin Kaepernick and all this shit. But honestly, it, it, gets, it gets so contrived when we talk about this whole national anthem shit and just politics in general. And that's why I don't, I don't, I don't really feel the need to expand on this anymore. And so let's talk about the Lakers. So with the Lakers and LeBron watch at the Sky Lounge. Always talking about the LeBron James here at the Sky Lounge. LeBron is just doing new and new shit every day. New shit every day. You know, he, he comes to LA. He, he's doing a fucking project. He's doing a goddamn video project. Next thing you know, who the fuck knows? He might do some shit with Rosie O'Donnell, despite the racist overtones of shit. But Jesus Christ, I mean, uh, and, and you, you start wondering, man, this move was probably planned all along. If a dimwit can, like me can fucking recognize that shit, come on, man. I'm pretty sure LeBron had this shit planned out for years. Pretty sure years. But that's just me. And for the Lakers, Luol Dang Wei based on a buyout agreement. Oh, my God. Stretching contract and making Luol Dang a free agent. What does that mean? Although the salary will take a hit on the Lakers' salary budget this year for Luol Deng's contract, this will give the Lakers about $30 million in cap space next season, which means for the 2019 free agency, we may potentially get Kawhi Leonard. Woo! Kawhi Leonard, LeBron James, Lonzo Ball, Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram. Come to Los Angeles, Kawhi. Fulfill your destiny. Do what you got to do. And in the NBA, we await as offseason guessing and prognosticating takes place daily on sports and media outlets. It's it's all we have to do at this point with, with fucking sports that hasn't really started. You know, at least we got, you know, world football going on right now. We also got a little bit of, you know, preseason, you know, NFL, but finally we're going to fucking full-on season. NBA and the NHL, we are still in pre pre preseason and when we talk about the NHL you know 
we're ripping the Vegas Golden Knights because we have to talk about the Vegas Golden Knights today. We have to talk about the issue that's going on with the Vegas Golden Knights and the performance enhancement drug issue that we just had over the weekend. For the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, Nate defenseman Nate Schmidt has been suspended for a PED violation of 20 games uh, in the regular season of the NHL. There's about roughly 82 games. 20 games is roughly a quarter of that. Let's talk about the facts of this case right now. Nate Schmidt was found with 7 billionths of a milligram of banned substance. So, that's a fact. The NHL has a very stringent and very strict PED policy. Uh, whether it be billions or trillions of grams, they milligrams, they will still fine you. They will still fucking suspend you. That's the fact of the matter. So with those two, two things weighed in for me, whether he ingested it unintentionally by trainer or an accident or whatever have you, unfortunate. But despite how frustrated I can feel, um, rules are rules. All right. I, I may not agree with it, but rules are rules. And unless they, you know, the commissioner and the NHL sees leniency in this case, I don't foresee any change in this happening. And so it sucks, you know, when we got rules working against you, despite you not being the perpetrator, this despite you being the innocent one. You know, sometimes rules work against you. And in this case, it may have against Vegas Golden Knights and fuck it. And shit happens. Shit fucking happens. And just be careful. Be careful what you put in your fucking body, all right? Don't shove shit in your ass, unless you know what the fuck you're shoving in your ass. All right, so in NHL, more signing than speculation, obviously off-season bullshit. With the Dodgers and the uh, Major League Baseball, Dodgers are finally out of the slump and are back into winning ways, so let's grind out to the playoff, boys. And really, Dodgers will be relevant for me around October, September. That, that's when that's when I'm going to go full in on Do like Dodgers territory of trying to learn the sport and shit like that. But, guys, remember, all weekly writing is on the SoundCloud description and also on the Twitch description below, so make sure you check that shit out. It's a Google Drive link. Weekly writing number 33, uh, comedy, you make my dreams, parentheses, come true. Based on the lyrics of Hall & Oates, uh, I wanted to create a humorous environment in the zombie apocalypse. And no joke, the idea came when I was about to play some video games while smoking. I'm not joking when I say that shit. I smoke a lot, and I play a lot of video games. But I know as of lately on the Twitch or YouTube, I haven't shown any video game clips. I understand that. But despite that, I was still trying to just take the edge off. And the idea came, and I thought, fuck it, I gotta, I gotta write this shit down. So when you have an idea, boys and girls, a pen and paper. Pen and paper become your best friends. Don't forget that shit. And I wrote this stuff kind of journal style where it, it's seen in the eyes of a preteen child. For all intents and purposes, the gore and the morbid outlook of society for him is very normal. And that's what I wanted to put in the humorous route of saying, you know, this salvaging zombie apocalypse is all fun and games, man. Like, literally for him, it's all fun and games. It's like a daily chore. He's used to this shit. Yes, it's life and death, but in, in a societal setting, when, when in that societal context, when your awareness or your your what's the right word for this your your conditions of survival your conditions or your style of living your living standard is set to a certain societal context it's different and that's that's where i drew the humor from for this one so that's why i called it that's why it was comedy maybe it's not funny but fuck it i found it fucking funny Weekly film number 33 i know i got to stop doing this selfish shit fuck you weekly film number 33 Searching. Watch Searching over the weekend, and let's talk about the plot. A father looks in the details using modern technology and social media to find his missing daughter. The director, Anish uh, Chaganti, I know I might be butchering that name right now, uh, uses modern technology as a literal storytelling device as he takes you on this journey. And it, it's, it's a bit of a thrill. It, it is absolutely a thrill. A lot of twists and turns. And maybe it's me. Maybe it's me, but I felt... Towards the end, the director really couldn't figure out which ending he wanted to end the movie on. He was kind of debating, like, oh, shit, there's, there's a lot of routes we can go to here. I don't, I don't really know what to do. So that's what it felt like for me. Uh, but overall, though, I mean, the, st the way the plot kind of revolved around and just twist and kept you pulling and yanking you around, it was, it was fun. It was really fun to just keep asking the question, who done it? Who done it? How? 
Why? All these questions were popping up in your head as an audience. And honestly, one of the best parts about it is, is the character played by John Cho, David Kim, um, the character David Kim played by John Cho. And yes, there were other actors and characters, but honestly, John, Ch John Cho just steals the show. John Cho just steals a show here, uh, really captures that disconnect parents can have with children, especially Asian parents, especially Asian parents with um, their children. And I think also bringing in that strictness of Asian culture on screen, and for John Cho, who understands that strict Asian culture, to bring that on screen, to really um, bring a palpable feel to it, it's very hard to do, but he, he, he did it very well, and I thought he played that concerned distraught parent you know to the teeth i mean I, I i saw myself just kind of sympathizing with the guy like my god i mean can you, can you only imagine if you're a parent going through this shit like he sold that he absolutely sold that role and what i think it is and this is I, this actually ties in with the cleverness of what, what they did with the visuals is this film doesn't have to exposit so much this film doesn't really have to have long expositions or long monologues until literally the very end, but that, that's, again, that's neither here nor, that's for another whole fucking thing. But whether the screen took you to the Windows XP, des uh, Windows XP uh, desktop, the Apple product user interfaces, uh, newsreels, or web clips, right? This was a really fun way to display information. The way you were displaying information and you have the interaction of the characters, um, you know, feelings and emotions through the screen and shit. And so it, it is nice because there really isn't a whole need for excessive exposition, like I said, nor, nor excessive monologuing. And it, it is nice, right? It is nice. However, I do feel that there were moments the audience can catch something way before uh, the film has time to visually show it. Because everything's on the screen. Everything's fair game. And if you kind of pinpoint and look, and if, if you're of the mindset watching the film, trying to figure shit out, if you're into the plot, you're going to notice shit, and it'll just pop up, and that's how shit goes uh, most most times. But as much as it was laid out there, I, I just thought that was, okay, that, as clever as it is, it can also work against you in that sense. And when we talk about the music in in Searching, I want to give a huge shout-out to Tor, uh, Torrin Barrowdale. I, again, butchering names. It's what I do composes the tracks and it brings a solid solid edge of your seat feel to the entire movie and huge shout out because the music can really make or break thrillers absolutely it can it can absolutely make or break thrillers like this and i think borrowdale's track fit pretty damn well and i've never really i to be honest i've never heard of this guy before but this guy seems awesome and I hope I hope we can hear more of his work and more of his compositions um, as as we keep going and throughout film history or film shit. I don't know miscellaneous shit. Honestly, as an only child who also happens to be Korean, who John Cho uh, ethnically is trying to portray in this film, this fucking movie was hitting home for me in a lot of fucking ways, man. And asking myself like, oh fuck, what if I got lost or something? Like, would, would my mom be able to find me? And immediately I answered, no, the fuck she wouldn't. She, I would be dead by day two. I don't, I don't really, have, I don't think I have survival skills at all either. So it's like, ah, dude, I'll be dead. She won't be able to find me. It'll, it'll be a fucking like dead corpse at this point by day five or day seven. So that's, that's there. Hey, alarm clock. Durr. And funny thing is I found myself contemplating about social media and technology afterwards. You know, harmless role playing was one of the quotes that I, I had to really, really think about when, when it was said. Harmless role-playing. And if and when you get to that point in the movie, you'll look at that, you'll look at yourself and think, what the fuck? Because when, when we use social media and do these fake personas and harmless role-playing, oftentimes, yes, intention's one thing, but bottom line is you're, you're being a pussy about it. Being a fucking pussy about it and a lot of and and sometimes too and sometimes not all not a lot of times not all the time but sometimes people can use this as a device of evil and just be a fucking cunt and make people miserable how many fucking cyberbullying should have you seen duh how many fucking suicide have you seen for cyberbullying fucking duh like holy shit like how are we not fucking opening our eyes to shit 
is, is uh, like, oh, he's having a woke moment. No, this is just common sense moment, okay? Common sense moment of me realizing, saying, listen, if you're on social media, don't be a pussy. Be you, be yourself, own up to your fucking opinions, and be confident about your goddamn opinions. Jesus fucking Christ. And that brings us to the review of this movie. I give Searching a good, solid 8.0 out of 10. Searching is an edge-of-your-seat thriller that paints a nightmare for modern-day parents in an interesting format that shows more than it tells. So I thought it was a pretty damn good movie. I'd absolutely recommend it for anybody. And the album of the week, you know we have to talk about it. You know we have to talk about it, boys and girls. You know we have to talk about it. Kamikaze. Kamikaze by Eminem. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Slim Shady is fucking back and my god. God, is he as glorious as ever? I'd say just go listen to the album. I don't even want to ruin any of the artistic aspects of this uh, of this album. Just go and listen to it. Go listen to it. Have your say. Me, I personally love this album. I love this album. I love everything about this album. Um, the fact that you bring out the Slim persona back, um, more evolved, more fine-tuned than ever, I think it speaks volumes about how fucking legendary Eminem is. But, again, guys, just... I'd, I'd recommend this to just you guys just checking this shit out because I, I, I can't personally say just it's good. Listen to it. But the only thing I, I do really want to touch on is are the disses. So, yes, rappers are now coming out with diss tracks and trashing Eminem. And, you know, the argument comes in Eminem shot first. Eminem shot first. Cool. Eminem shot first. But he could be the bigger person and just ignore that shit. Now, I'm not here to defend Eminem on this, uh, dissing certain rappers out there or, um, you know, the culture of rap at this point. I'm, I'm not defending that. But what I am saying is this. If somebody fucking keeps calling you a fat boy and you, you go, you, you buy in, man, and, and you get emotional, you get over, overzealous, you get, you get a little bit, um, you know, antsy and faux alpha male bullshit, you look like the asshole, right? Regardless of whoever started it, you look like the asshole. So that's all, that's that's really it. And you know, some, some can, here's the thing kids, and this is the thing I will say about Eminem, all right? You're absolutely entitled to your own opinion. You're absolutely entitled to your own opinion. But when you consider metrics, longevity, and impact on the culture, the respect to Eminem has to be given, right? And I say that about a lot of other rappers that I don't necessarily find their works great, but I do recognize they, their, their game, the impact on the culture, like Drake. I absolutely recognize that Drake is a huge impact on hip hop. Uh, you know, Nicki Minaj, you know, Migos, like all, all these cats, I recognize that shit. But when a cat like Eminem comes out with an album like Kamikaze, I don't know, man. I, I think just the respect, like, you know, some people, it, some people take the L, some people, you know, fight back, but I just say, fuck it, man, just, I say just leave it be. Oh, but you have to defend yourself. Not really, he's not gunning you, is he? He's not pointing a gun and fucking telling you to fuck off, right? I mean, some cats are coming this from a butthurt fo a fanboy angle. And to them, I say, watch that shit out your ass. And come at this with an open mind, you fat, shriveling, sniveling cunt. That's really it. That's all I need to say. And that, that's the thing. Enjoy the art. Enjoy the art. Yeah, yes. Um, when we talk about the billboards, the, the sales, it's quote-unquote competition, but it's the arts, man. Enjoy the different tastes. Enjoy the different aspects of it. It's fucking awesome, right? And, you know, different tastes, different shit going on. I figured, you know, I haven't, I haven't binged on Netflix series in a while, so I figured I'd delve into a Netflix series called Disenchantment. Netflix series that came out a couple of weeks ago uh, by Matt Groening, creator of the Simpsons series and Futurama. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the series, and it, I would recommend it to anybody, really anybody out there, with the caveat of saying, if you enjoy Groening's previous works, if you enjoy the Simpsons and Futurama, you will really love this. You will really, really love this, because his humor and sensibility isn't for everybody. But if you do dig it, you'll have a good time. And... Lastly, guys, staying indoors in the fat zone, all right? So mostly I've been spending days indoors, you know, and I've been eating like a fat fuck for the last few days or so. 
I mean, really, the last few weeks, let's be honest. And it comes from having no day-to-day -day obligations at the moment. And it's nice. It's, it's nice to just kind of be free, carefree, and shit like that. But prolonged periods, this is... It's fucking tiring. It's fucking tiring. So next week, guys. Next week. Sports and other obligations. So be on the lookout for that shit. So let's do this. All right, folks. So thank you so much for joining me this week. Make sure to subscribe on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Music for a new episode every Tuesday. Make sure to follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook at the Sky Lounge. Stalk me on Snapchat at DA13IG5UNG. Now, fuck off. All right. We got the recording done, boys and girls. So, once again, uh, Alfie, I apologize if I didn't uh, recognize your presence in the room, my bud. Uh, I was actually, you know, when I'm doing this fucking podcast, I'm basically reading a script or reacting with the script. So, really, it's, it's, for, the, it's, for, the, it's for the SoundCloud. Gotta do, for, gotta do for the cloud. Gotta do for the cloud. But, gonna be posting this up on YouTube real soon. Um, I'm probably, I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'll have highlights on this. Uh, a couple of highlights that I want to point out. Obviously, the, I think the Colin Kaepernick thing, I definitely want people to just hear me out on that shit. Just, because we, we get, we get so fucking into this shit about who's right, who's wrong. Let's just lay out some opinions and let's just talk it out right so that's it for the podcast that's it for the stream um i'm gonna i'll try to be back no guarantees but i'll try to be back but stay classy motherfuckers